What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, interesting take as Jose Benavidez Sr., father of once upon a time blue chip, welterweight, title prospect, Mexican, Ecuadorian superstar in Jose Benavidez Jr., and also undefeated two-time WBC super middleweight world champion Mexican Ecuadorian superstar boxer David Benavidez. So Jose Benavidez also trains uh, um, El Rayo, Venezuela, who took his first loss in his career this past weekend. But with that said, Jose Benavidez, uh, he and his son, they took on undefeated three division world champion former junior welterweight undisputed world champion currently the reigning wbo world boxing organization welterweight world champion who is widely considered by many to be the number one best pound for pound fighter in the world in terence bud crawford terence crawford is 38 wins no losses no draw 29 big wins by way of knockout he is 34 years of age five foot eight with a 74 inch arm reach uh terence crawford and Jose Benavidez Jr., they took on each other in which Terrence Crawford got a 12th round knockout victory over Jose Benavidez Jr. So Jose Benavidez Sr., he's familiar with game planning and preparing for Terrence Crawford, right? And he was asked about, obviously, the biggest fight in the sport of boxing between Terrence Crawford and which is his biggest rival in undefeated unified three belt wbc wba ibf welterweight world champion superstar boxer who is widely considered by many to be top two if not the number one pound for pound fighter in the world definitely top five pound for pound best fighters in the world in earl the true space jr okay earl space jr is 28 wins no losses no draw 22 big wins by way of knockout he is 32 years of age five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach okay he's a southpaw and uh terence crawford is a southpaw orthodox switch fighter but with that said jose benavidez was asked about this shout out to my brother ko artist sports on youtube go check out the interview in its entirety on ko artist sports and jose benavidez you know he was asked about you prepared and uh you took on terence crawford you know what it's like uh, you're familiar with Errol Spence. Uh, what do you think about the matchup, right? In which he replied that uh, he believes that Errol Spence is going to be the victor. But more importantly, his reasoning, right? He said that, you know, um, it's definitely a 50 50 fight. You know, um, he says, and uh, who's more prepared is going to win. Obviously, everybody says that. Um, but he says that Terrence Crawford won't be a dog in this fight. He says that once he feels the jab and the power of Errol Spence Jr., uh, Terrence Crawford mindset of being a dog is gonna go out the window and he's gonna wanna slow down the fight and he's gonna wanna box. And is he going to be able, and he's not going to be able to uh, control that pace and keep Errol Spence at bay, right? How long can he keep Errol Spence in, at bay? How long can he control that pace, right? Uh, so he stated that, you know, um, he believes that that jab of Errol Spence, right, is going to be too much in the power. Once Terrence Crawford feels the power, it's going to lead Terrence Crawford to be hesitant. He's going to become very hesitant, not very active, uh, want to be slow down the fight and want to be a boxer. He says he don't, he's not going to want to be a dog and mix it up unless it's a fight he has an advantage over. And this was what he was asked was, how do you deal with... Terrence Crawford's ability to be unpredictable and switch from South Border Orthodox. How do you deal with that? And uh, he says the jab and Errol Spence arguably has the best jab in boxing, right? So he says that Errol Spence is a South Border. He arguably has the best jab in boxing. And, um, you know, uh, he can control the pace of the fight. And he has power. He's big and he's strong. Now, what's interesting is South Borders don't usually like to fight South Borders. They don't like it. Okay, it's uncomfortable. It makes him completely uncomfortable. Uh, and so with that said, you know, uh, he feels the physicality of Errol Spence, the strength and the jab is going to be, you know, the keys to victory for Errol Spence. Now, I uh, disagree um, to, a, to an extent, right? I don't think that um, 
he's going to make Terrence Crawford hesitant. I actually think Terrence Crawford is going to turn up the heat. I think that Terrence Crawford is so confident, okay, in his skill set, uh, his ability to box, you know, uh, his ability to be a dog, and his power. Terrence Crawford has, you know, uh, knocked out or stopped the last, 10 of his last 11 opponents. So Terrence Crawford, you know, um, he's very confident in, in his abilities and his power and his skill set, extremely long arms. And Terrence Crawford is a dog. So when he says that he don't believe that Terrence Crawford, you know, uh, is going to want to continue to box, right? He says that he feels like, you know, uh, I mean, want to mix it up on the inside and be a dog. He don't feel like Terrence Crawford is going to want to be a dog. He's going to want to box and control the pace of the fight. Now, I personally think that is the key to victory for Terrence Crawford to control the pace of the fight, control the distance. Okay, uh, uh, get Errol Spencer's attention very early with something heavy, uh, uh, maybe a few times heavy to get him to be, you know, uh, uh, um, hesitant on his way in, uh, slow down his aggression, and then use your ability to box. Terrence Crawford has longer arms. He has, you know, um, he has power. You know, I think they have equal amount of power. You know, uh, just I think Errol Spence is physically, naturally stronger than Terrence Crawford. But Terrence Crawford, you know, uh, has power. Just punch and pure punching power. I believe Terrence Crawford has pure punching power. And I think that, you know, um, the difference is when Terrence Crawford gets you hurt, uh, he's for sure going to close the show. He's a shark in water when he smell blood, right? But so is Errol Spence. I think that people are under underestimating Errol Spence's ability to close the show when he gets you hurt, right? Uh, uh, Errol Spence will definitely... Uh, look to close the show when he gets you hurt. He gets very, very aggressive and he's very, very big, right? He's fundamentally sound. They get the job done in different ways. Um, but as far as Terrence Crawford being hesitant, once he starts to feel Errol Spence's power, um, that's a possibility, but I doubt that be, to be the case. Once Terrence Crawford, now Terrence Crawford will do, make adjustments because when Terrence Crawford in the beginning with Jose Benavidez, his son, Jose Benavidez Jr. was struggling with the distance and the range and the size and the length of Jose Benavidez Jr. He made the adjustment and, uh, you know, he was boxing from the outside. See, Terrence Crawford is very versatile. He has many tools in his toolbox. Now, my only knock on Terrence Crawford when it comes to this situation with Errol Spence and this particular fight is that time okay father time is undefeated Terrence Crawford to me has not shown uh to be as effective and elusive in the orthodox stance as he once was okay uh I, he's much more effective in the southpaw stance than he was than he is in the orthodox stance and that used to not be the case he was equally effective and elusive in the orthodox and in the southpaw stance now today's time that not that's not the case okay i see terrence crawford get hit a lot more when he's in the orthodox stance uh he is looks way more uncomfortable when he's in the orthodox stance uh he 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 looks um not as uh clean and precise when he's in the orthodox stance and his timing with his jab is not uh um once what it was when he was in the orthodox stance once upon a time uh hence the kell brook fight kell brook's timing and jab was getting uh, um, the best of Terrence Crawford until Terrence Crawford made the adjustment and switched the southpaw. Okay, when he was in an orthodox stance against Sean Porter, and Sean Porter was f being physical and aggressive, he was uncomfortable. He looked uncomfortable. His balance didn't look the same. Uh, even when he fought Igas Kavalaskis, and Igas Kavalaskis was aggressive, and they was fighting toe to toe in dog style, and. Um, he just wasn't comfortable in the orthodox stance. He's far more comfortable today's time in the southpaw stance than he is in the orthodox stance. And that gives me um, cause for concern because it takes away from his tools out the toolbox. <clears throat> uh, I thought, you know, um, that, you know, uh, if anybody, if there's anybody that could be Errol Spence, it's Terrence Crawford for sure. Um, but it limits his tools in the toolbox if he's not effective in the orthodox stance because now he's just a southpaw and southpaws don't like to fight southpaws. So he takes away his advantages to be versatile, okay? And he's not naturally the bigger guy or equally as big as Errol Spence. He's just not, okay? He moved up from 130, 135. Errol Spence is, is 
so far career 147 pounder that people uh, claim that he's really a junior middleweight 54 pounder campaigning at welterweight so um but when he says that it's going to make him hesitant there's a possibility i think that's a 50 50 i disagree i think that the chip on terrence crawford's shoulder the competitive nature that this errol smith's fight is going to bring out of him is going to want to see terrence crawford be a dog okay um but you know again terrence crawford has a very high ring iq and he understands like jose benavidez senior is saying if he's having trouble with the jab and he's having trouble with the power he will make the adjustment to be victorious in the biggest fights. Now, when he don't respect you like Igis Kavalaskis, he won't see necessary, see fit to make adjustment until he eventually just gets the best of you. But in this case, uh, I think that he will make the adjustment. I do agree with him when it, when you when you look at it from that standpoint because the level of fight. So we got to see how it unfolds and plays out. Hopefully, it comes to fruition sooner rather than later. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shitty videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.